Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breaking Bike Podcast. Today we are here with Solomon Gibbs, sick name. Uh, oh. Oh. What... Yeah, hello, hello. And Solomon, where are you calling from, Solomon? So I'm currently in sunny Wales. I live in around the Cheshire area. Um, just bought a house there, but now I'm uh, in the, my little holiday home in Anglesey. So yeah, nice. that's where I'm currently from, mate. Whereabouts in Cheshire are you from? Well, I'm not from Cheshire. I'm from North Wales. I'm from Staten, um, a little town in North Wales. I moved out of there around two years ago. Um, I bought a, just bought a new property in the Cheshire area. So that's where I'm currently living. I've literally grown up with my dad going, oh, northerners are so much nicer than southerners, all you southerners down here. And I'm <laughs> like, and it's such a... But you know what? I do think I do think there's some truth to that, to be fair. It's London syndrome is... is pretty yeah be- everyone's moody there yeah small town everyone's in the stuck in the matrix everyone's grumpy going from a to b constantly but yeah yeah exactly they're in the in the rat race aren't they in london um 100%. so so solomon can i call you sol or do you want me to call me solomon sol, okay. sol yeah sol's cool dude yeah sol. okay cool sol el sol um so sol tell people how you got into day trading you've been doing this since 2017 so that makes you yeah. like quite an original so oh, yeah. of it because, well yeah everyone here is day trading and it, they, it stems to the like they instantly think about the guys in dubai the guys selling lifestyle this that and the other and it's completely far from the truth it's like <laughs> i never had a mentor back back in 2017 around that time when i started getting into trading there was nothing like that i've been trading for around seven years Probably around five of them I've been profitable. The other three or two, I've, I've lost a lot of money. Um, and that's due to I haven't had a mentor. There's always been a lot of gurus, clowns who just are commission-based and will just get all your money through the commission sort of schemes and put some pretty pictures out there on Instagram for you to go, oh, I'll put £500 in there and you'll yeah. get 10 grand back. It's just not the reality of trading. Realistic trading, you make around 1% to 2% a week, ticks over, you look for a valid position, you enter, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, day trading is slowly going down the uh, drain, unfortunately, um, due to the influencers, due to people who just walked off Love Island <laughs> and somehow like have a magical um, field in day trading. But there you go. You can't, unfortunately, you can't stop them. But yeah. Well, I, I was. it's really interesting you bring up the Love Island. It's so funny because I literally saw the other day an advert for someone who was on love island a good few years ago promoting some for i don't know if it was day trading but it was maybe like some sort of drop shipping and things like that and obviously as your uh sam gowland oh god yeah um, well it's been like johnny mitchell sam gowland there's always they they keep talking like yeah yeah four apps and then goes to goes to e-commerce or tiktok shop or you know how it goes nowadays but well, there was a. I read an article about Johnny Mitchell a few years ago, and apparently it came out that his entire lifestyle was a load. As I'm sure with lots of people, his entire lifestyle was a load of rubbish, and it was just yeah. it was just floating this way of living. And actually, it was, I think it was daddy's money or something along those lines. And and Most and probably. these people are still, yeah, these people are still running these, uh, I guess scams. To be fair, is the best way of putting it. It and is, it's, it, it, yeah. it is. For, as, as painful as it is it's like they that's why I've, I've got here it's like a day trading scam sort of thing you're buying into their sort of dream you're looking up to them you're like oh i want their money when they're literally getting it through different avenues like either memberships courses <laughs> click my link to my bio all that stuff but mm. um yeah it's it's painful it is painful and obviously for me who is an actual profitable day trader who can sit behind the computer and generally make a lot of money it's painful to see that obviously i do promote my group to different yeah. people because i'm trying to get the realism into trading so it's hard for when people go why do you do it then and it's like i'm trying to put the realism into trading in that aspect and blah 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 but yeah it's um it's frustrating but hey ho well, uh, yeah and you've been doing it for eight years so i mean yeah, you, exactly. you clearly are that's a seasoned sort of professional so to speak of doing something for eight years so oh i yeah. got more far more credit and another thing that i just there seems there's this sort of new phenomenon this new sort of wave of a bit like 
Logan Paul and KSI with Prime. So apparently the the idea that Logan Paul came up with Prime is actually rubbish. I think oh, really? what you what you do is it, it, well yeah it, it makes quite business it makes quite good business sense I guess. What you do is you find an influencer someone in the public eye and then you go to yeah. them and say I've got this idea I want you to be the face of it. And then it gives it increases your immediate sort of traction it makes, because yeah it makes sense doesn't it? You, exactly and I think that's what because when I saw the advert for Sam Gowland and then obviously the Johnny Mitchell, I wonder if you're probably not even doing this. You probably don't even know how no, to day trade or no, how to. He's just a puppet, mate. That, that's how. That's Literally. how they go. They're, they're just they're just the faces. Unfortunately, it's like all the government and stuff like that. They're just puppets. They're there to to, to look pretty and to say what to say this that, and the other. But um, no, that's yeah. you've hit the they're nail on the head. head there, right? Yeah. So. What was it that you were doing before you got into trading and why did you reach a point where you decided that you want to change or did it not work? So I, I've always been obsessed with work and getting money, basically. As, as bad as it sounds, I'm very money motivated. I, 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 I want to provide for a family. I don't want my wife working. I want to provide for my kids. I want them to have anything they want sort of thing without spoiling them. But I... Yeah grew up in that aspect i dropped out of school at a very very early age didn't get any gcses didn't get this didn't get that and um, went straight into work i think i was i was cleaning the full floor floors in the jewelers for a bit then i started up my own car washing company that went to rat shit and then i, I started up um it's like selling it was, i started in school really started selling dust caps and little rubbers you know we'd get different rubbers um, so i knew i was always going to be an entrepreneurial um, and then it, ca- it became a point where my family used to have like a steel fabrication firm, like a small little family run thing, weld engaged, this, that, and the other. And I went into that at like probably 15, 16, very, very young, just mopping the floors, learning how to weld, learning this, learning that. And I just grew up through there. And then around, hmm, I'd say four years ago, five years ago, I obviously four years three yeah somewhere around that margin i quit my job um there because i was a wind turbine technician i was earning a very very good wage but because it was all yeah, I can imagine. I, I'd, I'd have a buy or sell limit with, with trading it was all very hands-free because i'd find the value position click it and i was letting do his work and i'd save profit and stop loss set and forget it and like being offshore it was like perfect because i had a lot of time on my hands like jobs would be very minimum i'll be going out there There'll be like three hour travels to get out to the actual turbine. So it, it worked out perfect. So that's why I stuck in the job for so long. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I reached a point where I was earning around, God, I think the point was like five to 10K a month doing this day trading sort of thing. And I was like, <laughs> as much as I love, as much as I love my job, seeing people, learning different things. There's no point in me being in it. I'd rather focus on building a community and giving back to others sort of things, treating others how they should have been treated from the guru that they went with lost all this money. So mm. that's when I decided to kind of switch up and go go outwards, spread my wings a bit, quit my job. I really, I really, I think, yeah, I, I like that. I really like when, I really like the way you just said sort of repair the damage that may have been done from, from other people. Did yeah. you... Was that something that you set out to do originally or was that something that you realized more and more people were coming to you and were going, oh, I've da 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 and I've I've lost X and X or well, how did it work? One of the main reasons I did this all promote, because I don't need like, I don't want to sound egotistical or anything of the sort, but I don't need to promote no. on Instagram. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. I could sit in a closet and make a lot of like, make like some 20 to 30, 40 grand a month just on a computer without seeing anyone. Yeah. But I like yeah. what I do. I like showing people the realism. Like, you don't have to be in Dubai. You could be in North Wales sort of thing. You'd be, like, printing a lot of money, doing this, that, and the other. Totally. Spending time with family. Like, the, the kids are on the beach now with my two dogs, my old man, and stuff like that. And it's, like, it's the small things in life. Um, but I was burned really badly around seven years ago. That's kind of what got me into trading. Because I, I, I seen this guy. I seen him making a lot of money. And I was there grafting, sweeping toilets, doing this, doing that. And I, I was like, right, let, 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 me, let me see what it's about. So I went into it, lost around probably like, God. Back then, it was around 200 to 300 pounds. But for me, 
when I was that young, I, that was a large, large account. I was using my dad's name because um, I was that young yeah. and this, that, and the other. And I was like, I don't want to be like this guy anymore. And I, I, I kept going into different people and they were all doing the same thing. And it was just a loophole. It was just a massive loophole of clowns uh, looking back at it now. But at the time, I was just looking up to influence and making a lot of money i wanted to be like them i wanted to i was getting enjoyment of just chatting to them because they had an aldi r8 and this that and the other and um yeah it's 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 a massive shame looking back at it now but <laughs> you got you got to do it to kind of be where i was at because i wouldn't have never known about how profitable day trading actually was if it wouldn't have started with them guys so i gotta thank him and i've got a not so yeah i know exactly it's um the or what would you say the what was what at the time was a disadvantage you managed to use yeah. as an advantage and 100%. you managed to grow it's, from it and learn from it's, it it's yeah. a blessing and a curse isn't it in some aspects yeah that's it yeah 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 it's because obviously i speak to i've spoken to quite a few like different coaches and people that are selling primarily their primary 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 source of income is helping people online and a lot of the time like these people aren't doctors they're not psychotherapists they're selling they have a goal to help people and they have some form of sort of anecdotal life experience that they use as ammunition to promote themselves but what's your opinion on this sort of new culture that we've got now which is it's great because anyone in theory can make it and anyone can yeah. provide a service that's valuable but at the same time as we've been discussing this entire time that allows room for the the con men the and the, the gurus and, and the parasites to yeah, sweep sort in sort of soak in and exactly and i, I, think... I suppose I, I wonder where it will... sorry go on there you go no no you go no i was just what is in my mind i think it's very good like how easily it is to make money online nowadays but obviously it comes with a massive downfall like you could go on some like there's a lot of guys i'm not gonna name any names but around the north wales area and um who have literally been texting me for the past two years saying i really want to get out of this job i'm in, I, like i'm struggling and probably about five months ago as one person in put um in like specific who was like i'm really struggling here and I've, I'm, I'm in debt this that and the other and then about two months ago, I looked back and he's some famous guy on Instagram. He's bought followers. He's 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 driving around in Lambo. He's driving around in Ferraris. And I, like I, me, me and my mate seen him and he was literally just in a Corsa. And it's like, it's crazy how many people can click on his profile. He looks like some, some fake guy, some different reality. And I'm like, these two just don't add up. But it's, that's where the dangerous sort of side comes into trading because people will follow his advice and lose a lot of money. And I've I've seen that many times before when people have obviously came to myself and I've I've been burned like hundreds of thousands. I've had I've had one gentleman um in his fifties like lose and it's just it's crackers wow. to me. It's it's re- it is really yeah. just, like, mad. <laughs> I, I I was listening to a, a podcast the other day and it was with a plastic surgeon and he was a very random tangent but it's kind of related or it is related yeah. and he was talking about how the amount of people particularly women that come to his clinic to get botched jobs repaired because obviously nowadays you've got the crazes of things basically they're mostly lips so you've got all these sort of underground uh beauty therapists that yeah. are not trained as well as they should be and they're sort of scamming people out of a lot of money i mean it's not quite the same because you don't spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on your lips but, but still it's the same concept making is that yeah it's the same concept yeah and especially if it's something to do with your body you've got to be even more careful so it's a, it's a tricky one and I, i'm not sure really sure where it's going to go sort of with the future yeah, I just hope that it doesn't. As you sort of you alluded to earlier, you said that the day trading is sort of dying a little bit. Yeah, and I really hope. Well, first of all, why why is that? Because I'm I'm intrigued. In, sorry, say that again. 
in terms of what you said something wrong yeah in terms of the, the the day trading as a sort of as a concept is not as what would you say but active it, it, as it once was yeah so it's dying out massively due to the fact that there's hundreds of thousands of people trying it with the wrong people and they see it they lose mm. two grand and they'll never try it again and obviously, it's not just yeah. them that it's affected. And they'll speak to their parents. Their parents will speak to someone else. They'll speak. Do you know what I mean? So it goes on, and it's just a, a it's just a fungus. It, it, it's just a mold, and it just goes out to the bad population. That day trading is a scam, but it's generally not. Yeah. <laughs> day trading in the right hands and the right mentorship is very, very profitable. Um, but yeah, that's where it becomes obviously a massive problem when all these people are making commission, making this, making that. Um, and leaving nothing for the people. Like, they've never had any inkling on day trading. They don't even have the MT4 app. They don't have any of the trading view, and they're just putting people's results up, like, where they might find it anywhere, and, yeah, m making a lot of money off it. Um, so in that aspect, it's a massive shame, but it's the fact that, like, back to what we were saying, I got burned at a very young age from day trading. If I would have got burned oh, from yes. e-commerce or from drop shipping or something like that, I probably would have pursued that. But because I got burned seven, eight years ago from a guru, like all these other clowns at the moment, um, I kind of set my mind to, I will make money in this industry. It's a multi-trillion pound industry. There is a lot of money to be uh, mm. made. As you can see, there's like charts there is online. You can see how much money's exchanged daily through hands. Um, and yeah, I, I knew that was, it was a very, very profitable thing. Um, so... That's why I went down that route, went down that avenue, folk tunnel vision, <laughs> saying I will make it, uh, manifested it for all these years. And luckily now I am a very prof um, profitable day trader who is making 60 to 80 to 100,000 pounds monthly um, on good months. So, yeah, which is obviously lovely wow. to hear. As egotistical as that sounds, it's it's a massive um, step yeah, stepping man. point. Um, so That's a great achievement, yeah. yeah. And... And I, I do, I sort of appreciate the fact that you, not appreciate, that's the wrong word, but it's admir admirable the fact that you were burnt and your reaction wasn't to sort of squirrel away and cower away from it. Your reaction was to, well, I'm now going to go and prove. Talk me through that sort of thinking. Why did you reach that conclusion, do you think? Well, I, I, I couldn't even tell you, Ollie. It was just due to the fact that I knew there was a lot of money being made in the, obviously the foreign exchange industry in the charts. Like I was having good days and then, but the, 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 the losses would massively outweigh Like in these groups with all these gurus, they plaster loads of trades in loads and loads of trades in. And me, young me was just doing them, blah, blah, blah. Just they're, they're, they're the profitable traders. I'll just copy them. And um, I knew obviously profitable traders only take around like one position a day mainly. Um, but, yeah, um, I knew there was a lot of money to be made, and I studied and studied and studied YouTube hourless, um, hours upon hour days. Um, just had my head in the charts, yeah. YouTube, learning out news, every every single thing that puts day trading together as one. Um, so yeah, and luckily it's it's paid off. So paid off completely. Yeah, I, yeah, because you said earlier you were like that if you could you would you know if you wanted to you could just sort of hide away in a closet and i i would imagine that you strike me as a very extroverted person and a very sort of enthusiastic yeah. which is obviously important because it's helpful to be enthusiastic about things yeah but you clearly seem like someone who likes to have people around them and you're obviously a oh, yeah, massively, so massively was it hard yeah was was it hard was there not i suppose maybe you were able to direct that and channel it into the work. Yeah, I went through but... in terms of is it was it hard for you? And yes, it was difficult, but I needed to do it. Basically, um, my family business went under and it affected everything. My dad was in a lot of debt. He's was a very wealthy, um, well, not very wealthy guy. He did, he did all right for himself, paid the bills, pay, paid for our stuff, this, that, and the other. And it all came crashing down. He, he now lives in a caravan, like mm. this, that, and the other. He's retired because I've retired him. I've, I've, I've kind of got him on the day trader scene, this, that, and the other. But like, that's kind of my motivation to 
do well, kind of provide for the family um, and yeah. different aspects yeah. like that. That kind of made me like, when no one's coming to save you, <laughs> you're in this world on your own. No one's going to come and give you this, give you that. You Like, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it properly sort of thing. And yeah, I um, that's kind of what motivated me to do that, Ollie. Yeah, that's a very, I, I've, I've spoken to a couple of people who family is is a huge motivation for you, yeah. and for them, and obviously for you. And that's really, that makes sense. And I think being motivated by something as like pure as, and like, what would you say, close to you yeah. as family is a very strong motivator. Yeah, but I can imagine that that would, that gets you through a lot. And especially if, uh, when you, I suppose, presumably growing up, you weren't exactly, you you lived quite a, a decent life. And then as you got older and, and the thing happened yeah. with, your, with your dad's company, there was that shift and that would have sort of, must have been, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm trying to, because my, my dad um, runs his own, owns his own company yeah. and, and it, it's, he does, it's, he's not like, particularly sort of successful but he does he does a he does a good living for, yeah. for, for us considering it's just him on his own yeah, yeah, yeah. um and ha- not having that stability but what that comes with a sort of a nine to five salary-esque job yeah, yeah, yeah. is something that be quite daunting but also oh. something that must be very empowering yeah well, so i well, imagine that you you the fact that you are in control mm. Yeah, so so obviously, yeah, it was it, it was it was a massive thing for everyone. Obviously, at, at that time as well, mum walked out on us. Like there was a lot of, a lot of things massively changed, and obviously wow. he was in a bad place. And I obviously had to step. I had to like step in. It was crazy because obviously I looked up to him, and then I still do now. Obviously, but the, the roles kind of changed. I was paying him to get through life, and it's it's obviously a massive thing being su- at such a young age to step up and be this responsible adult like because my little brother i had to pay for his car for his like i paid for his at aldi a3 i paid for his insurance i still do to the state um and it's like yeah it's it's the struggles you don't see the on social media i suppose what has living this what has going through the sort of what would you say the baptism of fire that the last maybe eight years of your life has been what has that taught you about yourself and what has it taught you about any advice you could give to any other young men or people in general out there? Well, no one's here to save you. Let's put it that way. That's it. You can have everything in the world and it can be taken away okay. from you in two minutes and you are left with nothing. And then what are you going to do? Like, no one is coming to save you. That's why I've realised, like, you could have everything and the next day you could have nothing and be left in debt. Um, and it's on you. <laughs> if if you're not going to do it, no one's going to do it else for you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's kind of summarised everything. Um. For me, obviously, the eight years, the, the past three years, which has been very very rough. Um. But yeah, kind of no one's going to save you in this industry, in this world that we're living in right now, as corrupt yeah. as it is. <laughs> um. So yeah. Why Why have the last sort of with what you're comfortable talking about? Why have the last three years been so difficult is it because of covid and things like that not even that dude to be honest um didn't affect well yeah didn't affect i think i was working on the turbines the um the first bit of it but after that that's kind of when i hung the hook up right i am on one percent just saying but um yeah it's it's kind of um yeah the three years there's a lot of personal things like my family with my family and um quite deep stuff like a lot of like yeah. the people passing away um in my if in my family it shows you how short life is um because the most of it would be unexpected yeah um so that's kind of being a very motivational to kind of get it out to the younger generation that stop listening to these guys focus on you focus on yourself just get <laughs> go and get this money correctly 